had, I know very little about the Day of the Dead. Um, I've, you know, eaten in Mexican restaurants about this time of year and seen them all decorated with the skulls, which just didn't do too much for me. It's like, skulls, really? And what about this is a good thing? You know, and I'm kind of a color-based, I'm kind of this kind of guy, and the, uh, the Day of the Dead decorations are mm, more bold than that. You know, red, green, yeah. Um, so, um, and there was something about the joy of the dead, the joy about the skulls and skeletons and stuff that just, it wouldn't go in my head. I, I, so I've always kind of gone, oh, that's interesting. Um, um, I didn't, I, it did a tiny bit of research to try and figure out what to say this morning. And I um, uh, maybe should have done a lot more, but that's, you've gotten about all I got so far. Um, uh, as, as a day to honor the dead, as a day to remember those in the language that, that um, as Americans do in lots of ways, put the whole subject of death at a greater distance than other peoples do. Um, you know, we, <clears throat> the whole uh, funeral industry, you know, it's all about making, oh, don't they look good? <laughs> anyway, um, so it, that's really just a kind of a cultural difference, all of the things I've listed so far, because um, Halloween is, you know, right at the same time, and um, we do worse than skulls. <laughs> the, the whole zombie thing is another one that I don't get, but um, uh, I'm not sure why Halloween's become one of the biggest party days of the year. I'm, I'm not sure about the statistics on that, but you know the the places that the the stores that open up in mid September for six weeks and make enough in that time to keep the rent going for the rest of the year, and then they just close down. Um, so, um, I like the part about ancestors. I appreciate those who, um, um, I knew I wanted to bring pictures, and then this morning I couldn't find them. However, they're over there. Um, I don't know how we're gonna fit those in exactly. Um, this morning, but I'm glad that you've um, that you've brought them. Um, so, um, as as Christianity developed over the years, um, they wanted to remember the people who were important to them in addition to Jesus. Um, Peter, Paul, James, and John. And then some of the other um, uh, great leaders of the church, um, and um, and so they began to name days after them, and to name them as saints because they were more helpful, um, or um, had um, miracles done through them or by them or something. So. Gradually, uh, I think probably 365 days have saints attached to them. Um, and um, have looked some at um, uh, some of the Central American countries. Uh, we've toyed with the idea of an extended vacation down there or something. And some of them will say something like, well, 180 of the 365 days are still celebrated as days off for, for the Saints' Day. 
sounds like a good deal if I was still working. You know, if I'm, um, so they finally had to say, we need a day to um, uh, to honor all the rest of the saints because we only got so many days in the year, so we've got All Saints Day, which is the first of November, uh, and the day. Secular cultural all, culture always has a way of responding to one of, the, especially when it's the, a church-led society. The church says this. And so the culture brings the balancing uh, spiritual flow the day before. So we're going to have this penitent Lent where we don't use um, uh, fat in any of the cooking for the whole six weeks. Um, and we don't eat, meat. <laughs> don't eat meat, fish on Fridays, and so forth. Um, and uh, what's what rose up it was Mardi Gras just before that. So not exactly penitent, but um, celebration. And uh, Fat Tuesday, because Ash Wednesday, you don't have fat in the house anymore, so you use, you know, you make a lot of, of uh, uh, donuts on Fat Tuesday. Um, so the day of honoring the spirits of our ancestors who are in heaven there's, in the Bible and woven throughout Christianity, is this dichotomy between spiritual things and fleshly things. The spirit and the flesh are at war with each other. I want to do this, but I end up doing that. And the things that, the things that I want to avoid doing, that's what I end up doing. So, um, the same pattern of a spiritual day and gets preceded by a, uh, a day that recognizes not just the spiritual truth, someday we're all going to heaven, but the, the fleshly truth, eh, when people die, we bury them, and we've discovered that before long, they're skeletons and skulls and so that's some of the the development of the traditions I think um, Christian um, quote that we'll do a little bit more with later um, we sorrow not as those who have no hope said so I'll do a little more about that later but I want to give you a uh, a chance to let that start cooking. Why did he say that? Um, again, thinking about ancestors, um, we traveled in um, Ghana for three weeks one time, um, and uh, the first and last week of it were down in the big capital city, which is a lot like all around the world capital cities. Um, but we had a week in the middle where we traveled around with with a guide um, and four students who were um, volunteers in mission and had lived there for nine months at that point. Um, and the guide and the driver and the two of us and the four students in a Land Rover. Mm -hmm. Without luggage. With, oh, look, and and uh, several cases of water pillows. Anyway, um, they didn't have bottles. They had these little plastic pillows. Um, but the highlight of that trip for me was um, uh, in the village that our um, guide had come from. So he was known, and he took us there. And the, the community had as its spiritual background um, one-third um, Christian and one-third Muslim and one-third animist, you know, the, the native religions of spirits in the trees and the animals and the rocks. And, um, and the three um, 
belief systems manage to live together in peace or harmony as the song goes. Um, it was a large village with, um, I have no idea how many compounds, I'll say uh, 30 to 50 compounds. We only really saw one. And the compound was made up of six huts, each one 15 feet across, which is you know roughly this. Um, mud, thatched, um, round. round, thank you. And um, uh, the doors were uh, almost human head height, so it wasn't that you had to stoop and crawl in. But those were big spaces. Um, and for sleeping, they just slept on the, uh, on the ground within those. Um, sometimes it was concrete, anyway. Um, uh, and then between each hut, there was a wall, probably about this high, chest high or something or other, so that you could be in the compound area and look out at African wilderness. The, the, the plains all the way over there to the, to the forest or the trees, and, um, and it was wild, you could tell. Um, didn't see any uh, scary animals walking around, but, and on both ends of the compound, they had a kind of a um, uh, serpentine entrance, which would make it harder for an animal to try and figure out how to get in, so it was a um, uh, protection thing. Um, and, We were walking in, there was a, um, a fire pit in the middle and auntie was over there with a, a wash uh, bucket washing the clothes and the kids were running around and there were several other knots of people around. Um, it was a big space and um, I was hit with, suddenly with the sense of home. There was something I think um, strongly wedded to the smell of the fire and the connection of all the people and the sense of, of uh, community and belonging and protection and um, it's the strongest single experience of home I've ever had which surprised me a little um, but um, <clears throat> a real sense of community um, the reason it's useful today is um, they buried the leaders of uh, who had, had died um, on the approach path to the entrances. So Uncle Joe was buried out over here and uh, great grandpa, great grandma over here. <clears throat> so you could never enter or leave without the awareness that your ancestors are there watching over you to protect you and to expect your behavior to be in line with their expectations. Um, so it's a um, powerful memory for me. Uh, the movie? Yeah, when he meets his father. Uh, the vision? Uh, you know. That made me think of La, La Amistad, the movie, where the slave ship um, got uh, the crew abandoned ship and the slaves freed themselves and took it over and uh, brought it to port mm -hmm. and um, they were all arrested the, the leader was um, and there was a Supreme Court trial and the attorney that was representing him um, said now, now don't worry about going in there and being with all of these judges and uh, the um, s slave uh, anybody remember his name um, said, I'm not worried. At this moment, 
I am the only reason for the existence of all of my ancestors, and they will be there with me. Whoa, another powerful piece. So um, that's, the, that's the, uh, the limit of my thoughts um, on the day, um, uh, the day of the dead. Um, I've got a little spiritual exercise uh, that I want us to do in a few minutes.